Yes. Yes. Good to go. Super. Great. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Did I see something else? Hubli, Singur. Okay, great. So we have all of you. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I'm going to now share my screen. And we... Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is my screen visible to all? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Super. Great, 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 great. Let me also put it up. Okay. So, super. Um, can I have, uh, uh, before we start, uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, say the Mangla Charana. Okay, we will start every day with the Mangla Charana. So, Om Jnana Timiranda Syanana Anjala Shalakaya Chakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Vancha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So once again, welcome to the 26th batch of uh, Bhagavad Gita overview that we do in 18 days and this will be continuously done over a period of 18 days. So please, I request you I know all of you are young people, Friday, Saturday, Sunday would be extremely important and you all will be very, very busy, but please spare your time, you know, block your calendars for one hour from seven to eight o'clock. And um, I would love to have you all attend these sessions regularly without breaking it, because it's not only a question of, um, you know, your time, but I think you're going to benefit a lot uh, for certain, you know, from these gems that are going to come out uh, from from the Lord, uh, and uh, even though it's going to be an overview, uh, I'm sure it's not going to be something that is going to leave you without thinking, and it'll keep it'll keep you so occupied in your mind that it will change the way you look at your own life and the way you live your life. Okay, so I really request you all to join these sessions, participate in these sessions, because it's only by participation will you be able to really enjoy and don't miss this opportunity. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime and you have got it. So which means you're really blessed, which means there is some kind of a message that the God consciousness within you is trying to reveal to you. So please, for heaven's sake, don't drop off because we often find many people just dropping off, you know, uh, and that's not really, really something that we want. If there is an issue that you have, please, let, let us know. We will see how we can help you with it. Okay. So Hare Krishna. So <clears throat> welcome to understand the Bhagavad Gita 18 days. So this is being brought to you by uh, Iskon Mangalore, as I, as I said. And uh, yeah, give me a minute. Yeah. So as I said, uh, you know, the Bhagavad Gita that we will be, uh, uh, we will be discussing with you and sharing with you is based on the teachings of his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is a founder, Acharya of ISKCON. Can you tell me what does ISKCON stand for? The full form of ISKCON? Can somebody tell me? Krishna Consciousness. Come again. International Society of Krishna Consciousness. Excellent. Thank you, Mataji. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah. So what does, um, you know, what does the, what's the meaning of Bhakti Vedanta? Does anybody know what does Bhakti Vedanta mean? What does, let's break it up. You know, in Sanskrit, you have to break up things. So what does Bhakti mean? What's Bhakti? Bhakti means what? Come speak up. 
chanting of hari krishna or chanting of god or... bhakti is devotion hmm? and the way you practice or you approach or you you improve your process of bhakti is through a process of chanting very good then vedanta what does vedanta mean vedanta again break it up into two words veda anta ved means it is knowledge anta. inside the ved yeah <laughs> no ved means knowledge anta means the purpose okay so he is called the bhakti vedanta because he believed that bhakti devotional service is the end of all knowledge okay the only knowledge that will help you to really understand the purpose of life is bhakti or devotion okay so that's prabhupad for us and uh, you know this is how Pra prabhupad was this is the ninth the year 1966 this was in san francisco where he held the first ratha yatra okay um so you know the bhagavad gita that we will discuss you know which is written by uh, swami uh, shrila prabhupad will be incomplete if we don't know who shrila prabhupad is okay does anyone know who shrila prabhupad is and does anyone have an idea some of you are from kolkata so do you know uh, things about Srila Prabhupada. Anyone? Those of you are founder from of his con. Yes. Founder of his con. He's a founder, founder of his con. con. Yes. What else do you know about him? Okay, I'll tell you. So Prabhupada, you know, um, you know, at the, the, the first Ratyatra that he held, he was born in 19, I think, uh, 1980. Uh, yeah, so he, this was the first Ratyatra that he held, you know, when he was barely uh, 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 five years old. Okay, that is 1901 is when uh, he held the first Ratyatra. He was born in a very spiritual, spiritually inclined family. And seeing his inclination and proclivity to spirituality, the family really encouraged him to, to kind of, you know, continue his studies of uh, bhakti and his studies on Vedanta and studies of the Bhagavad Gita and other, uh, you know, rich scriptures that our country, you know, has. And then his, his, his Guruji was uh, Sri, uh, um, you know, Bhakti Siddhanta Swami. Hmm? And, uh, you know, Bhakti Siddhanta Swami realized the potential that young, um, you know, Prabhupada had in him. And he encouraged him to follow the path of, uh, of, of bhakti. Okay, and then uh, Prabhupada also, you know, he also continued with his, uh, with his, uh, you know, with the, with, the, with, the, with the family business that they had. I think they were into pharmacy business. He continued with the pharmacy business. And uh, before that, you know, as a, as a student, he was studying at the, at the, at the, at the Scottish Church, uh, uh, you know, college. And he did his Bachelor's of Arts. And he also briefly was associated with Mahatma Gandhi in the, the freedom movement. And then in 1922 is when he met his guru, uh, um, you know, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And uh, he took his initiation. Initiation means where they kind of, you know, take, you know, make vows to follow certain austerities and, you know, adopt certain controls in them so that their bhakti can move very smoothly. And then... Uh, you know, uh, his, his, his Guruji told him, you know, because he was, he was very fluent in English. If any of you have read his books, you will understand what, what a command and rich language he had. And, uh, you know, there are very many people, disciples of his, uh, who say, uh, you know, that after reading his books, they cracked all the, you know, the, the, the various entrance exams, especially the, you know, the, 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 the part on vocabulary you know, in a, in, a, in a jiffy, because, you know, the kind of word, the sentence formations, the way he conveys an idea succinctly, precisely, and beautifully, wherever there's an explanation that is given, there's no repetition, he does it so beautifully, okay? So that's the, that's the beauty of um, Srila Prabhupada, he, he was extremely great in his communication skills, and, uh, 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 you know, and, and, and it just shows in the, in, the, in, the, in the plethora of books that he has left behind for us. Okay, and uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur told him, um, you know, that he must engage in writing books. In fact, Prabhupada believed that sharing of books and sharing of knowledge is the only way we can spread the awareness of Krishna consciousness, not only in India, but across the world. Okay, and so in 1944, he started his publication called Back to Godhead. 
okay and with little money uh, he had no money hmm? the business kind of business that he ran gave him very little money for him to do anything but still he did not give up because his determination was so strong the power of you know uh, you know uh, engaging in krishna consciousness was so high in him that nothing really deterred him i have read as, as a child i grew up in kolkata and you know i have i used to be used to get this back to godhead uh, magazine at home because my father was a life member of uh, is gone so it was such a beautiful magazine so well written and so well con the, the contribution made by all the disciples was extraordinary absolutely extraordinary now of course back to what it copies are available digitally so all of you who are interested please go to google and look it up these magazines had such lovely stories and such lovely uh, you know narrations of the various glories of god past times and also of devotees and the way krishna consciousness helped them from the various kind of uh, you know things that they were entangled in or they were bonded in and how it give them gave them freedom of expression and the joy and pleasure that they experienced okay now um our prabhupad uh, you know then um, you know 1954 he took uh, uh, you know the the vanas vana the, he he took the uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, he 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 he, he came, took up uh, uh, the vanaprastha ashram vanaprastha ashram is after the grihastha ashram you know he gave up all his family uh, indulgences and he moved to the vanas uh, the vanaprastha and uh, uh, soon after that you know he moved to brindavan and uh, here is where he translated the shrimad bhagavatam that has 18000 verses okay and then he realized that you know if at all you know we need to really spread krishna consciousness western world needs to be you know bought into the sphere of this understanding because where whatever the west does it gets adopted easily across the rest, rest of the world and that's how he set out on sale on the 13th of august in 1965 with hardly hardly any money i think he had 8 dollars or something when he landed in the us he was on a ship called jaladu jaladuta and uh, he had a couple of heart attacks during uh, during his travel from uh, from india to uh, to the us and uh, he survived all of it it was all the will of god you know today if all those things had not happened we wouldn't have been what we are today as a scorn and we wouldn't be here today you know although we are connected on zoom this kind of a connection could have never happened you know what prabhupad said i believe he was in a in a lecture session hmm? and uh, he really praised you know uh, uh, technology modern technology he said he said modern technology is absolutely fabulous so one of the persons in the hall who was sitting there you know he just laughed loudly it was a small hall so when the person laughed it just boomeranged yeah and uh, prabhupada mm. just stopped and he looked at him he said hey what happened why are you laughing why did you laugh so loudly at what i said so that person said he just kept looking at him he said you're you, and and then afterwards when prabhupada prodded him a little more he said you are praising um, technology ha huh? you are a spiritual man why are you praising technology of what use is technology to you So prabhupad imagine this was in the, in the in the late 60s okay prabhupad said you know what it's because of technology that i am able to spread krishna consciousness that it's because of technology that i'm here in the western world it's because of technology that i'm able to really you know print so many books of mine and spread it worldwide across different countries so why are you laughing i am able to spread krishna consciousness so look at that prabhupad said this in the late 60s when technology had hardly taken off and isn't that true today we are sitting in 2022 and it's because of technology that we are connecting with each other so many of you are from different parts of the country and we have this mata ji priyanka mata ji from bangladesh look at this connection that technology has enabled and how did it happen it happened definitely because of the energy that the lord gave us to be able to bring about such technology and help us to connect so that we as devotees can associate ourselves and really you know enrich and enlighten ourselves in the in the deep knowledge that our scriptures have left behind for us okay okay so that's the jaladuta hmm, where uh, you know that uh, that took uh, prabhupad from india to uh, <clears throat> to the americas 
and then uh, it was it was a humble beginning but please remember today iskon is a big movement it's a movement that has connected so many of us and the common thread that connects us is just simply krishna consciousness and nothing more nothing else nothing nothing less right so <clears throat> prabhupad you know the, the who's of the who the who's of who became devotees of uh, krishna conscious became devotees uh, became disciples of Pr prabhupada and all this is because of the rich knowledge that is contained or that is that is that is that is encapsulated in the bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is such a powerful tool that connects people eclectic people hmm, and all brings them to this platform of krishna conscious the only connect that you and i that all of us have together is krishna consciousness okay now this is the these are the number of books that prabhupada said just imagine you know uh, how uh, uh, you know he started all this probably started back, you know uh, back to god in 1944 and he had just written the bhagavad gita and four cantos of uh, the shrimad bhagavatam when he set out from india in 1965 and prabhupada left uh, uh, this material world in um, in um, you know in 1977 so some 65 to 77 he hardly had 12 years in 12 years look at the number of books he has unimaginable unbelievable right and when someone asked him i believe prabhupada would keep reading his own bhagavad gita every now and then so somebody asked him why are you reading the book that you have written he said i never wrote any of them it's krishna krishna wrote everything so therefore i have to read it again and again you're getting the point Are you with me, everybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Yes, ma so, isn't it amazing? Yes, isn't this amazing? His travel, the number of books he wrote, and uh, his his appreciation of uh, of of technology, and as well as his appreciation, uh, uh, you know, his appreciation to to spread this awareness and knowledge using the various platforms. Hmm? We're talking about late 1960s. We are here in 2022. So probably most of you probably don't know anything other than technology, right? So this was those, those era where even phone, telephone was a big deal. Hmm? And that's Back to God had the magazine. So here I'm going to play a little, uh, <clears throat> it's a little short clip. Uh, it tells you the kind of travel uh, and the kind of time that Prabhupada spent from 1965 up until he gave up his material body in 1977. So watch this in just a few minutes, just a few seconds. So from 1965, okay, I don't know. I wanted that last slide. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so from 1965 to 1977, there is not a single continent that Prabhupada did not go to. Okay, so that is these are the these. The, this is how Krishna consciousness spread across the world, across across every continent. You know, in 12 years, and his disciples are so so. Uh, you know, good. that they 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 continued the mission of uh, of 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 prabhupad and we are so thankful to all of them not only to prabhupad but also to each of his disciples for helping us to kind of engage in krishna consciousness and help to spread the awareness of of the bhagavad gita and all the other rich scriptures that prabhupad left for us hare krishna so this is the deity of radha rani and shri krishna and every iskon temple across the world will have this very similar kind of deities and the arrangements and the decorations are all absolutely the same i mean prabhupada left such a classic sop standard operating procedure 
that nobody, you know, just goes away, or comes outside of because there's no need for it. It's so beautifully done. And all these gods and goddesses mm -hmm. are decorated, okay, with jewelry. They're not, you know, none of these jewelries are, you know, all these gold and diamonds and things like that. They're simple, normal jewelry. And these jewelries are all made with love and affection by devotees. Can you imagine? Just, just, just imagine, you know, how, how engaging this con platform is for all of us to be deeply, you know, connected with the Lord. And as well as, you know, with, with, all, with all the devotees and associations that comes out of uh, our bhakti and devotion. Yeah? Very many people think bhakti means dull. No, bhakti at no point in time, devotion is not at all dull. Bhakti is enlightening. Bhakti is enjoyment. Bhakti is emancipating. Bhakti is energizing. It absolutely helps you and, you know, it kind of uplifts you. To a higher plane, you know, the material plane that we are all in is full of things, all kinds of distraction. Whereas bhakti, when you are on the bhakti marga, the kind of qualities that you develop, which you, we will read as part of the various chapters in Bhagavad Gita, will really enable you to become absolutely a better person. And when you are a better person, you are not only better for yourself, but you're also better for every every living entity that you associate yourself with. You are endearing to others and automatically others also find you very endearing. That is what bhakti is all about. Okay? But never ever think bhakti is boring. Never ever, whoever thinks so, I think they're really missing out something in life. So the ISKCON that I come from is located in Mangalore and that's the address of our temple. Uh, we are celebrating Janmashtami next month. Whoever wants to travel, please let your admin of the group know or please, you know, let me know on the chat. I'll take your names and ask your admin to reach out to you. You can come, visit us in Mangalore, stay with us, you know, enjoy the Janmashtami program that we have. And Prabhuji is also organizing, um, you know, a, a trip to, uh, it, it, only this morning he told us, he's also arranging a trip to Jagannath Puri. So whoever, you know, are close by, Please join us, you know, in that uh, trip that we are we are organizing. So the temple president, as I said, and my Shiksha Guru is, uh, you know, Namanishta Das Prabhuji. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's an engineer, mechanical engineer. Uh, you know, done his BTAC from the IIT Kanpur, and he got into his con uh, even when he was a student. You know, he was deeply engaged and he was deeply moved by by the by the by the rich knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. And, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, after finishing his BTEC, he took up a job at Infosys and he, I think he worked for six months or something and then decided that his calling is very different and he became a sannyasi uh, with his con. And that's how, and that's how his journey started um, in Krishna consciousness and in his con. And of course, we are grateful that we have somebody like him who's guiding us now um, to, to, en to enlighten ourselves and uh, as well as uplift ourselves from the mundane to the extraordinary. Hare Krishna. So, so what is the Bhagavad Gita? The Bhagavad Gita is an epic scripture is what most of us know, right? But what many do not know is that it has answers to all our problems. You know, we have variety of name the problem. Tell me what all kind of problems are we facing today? Can you, can you tell me? Just, uh, uh, you know, uh, unmute yourself and tell me what kind of problems are we facing? Anxiety. Great. Bhagavad Gita has an answer to it. Hare Krishna. Stress. Come again, Mataji. Stress. Stress. Yes, Bhagavad Gita will give you an answer to that. What else? The relationships. The money okay. problem. Money problem. Excellent. The future. Excellent. Struggle. Depression. 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 The general disease. Excellent. Yes, birth. Yes, Mamrata Mataji. Birth and death and diseases, depression, anxiety, stress, money, financial issues. Yeah. Uh, you know, you yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna. By the other perspectives. Huh? Adi Adi, Adi Devi, Adi Bodhi. Okay. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you. So, understanding life. 
Yes, understanding life. So, Mataji, I want all of you to stay with me for 18 days and let me know on the 18th day if it's if, if Bhagavad Gita, the chapters, and the. Amrita Mataji, can you hold up on mute, please? Someone is bringing a noise. Amrita Mataji, you're bringing in a noise. Okay, Nagavini Mataji. Okay, okay. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, just uh, watch out uh, if there's any noise in the background. Uh, it really disturbs. Okay, so the Bhagavad Gita is an epic scripture that has the answers to all our problems. It is, was considered a spiritual dictionary by none other than Mahatma Gandhi. It's a book of inspiration for many leaders across the planet. Since many of you are here from West Bengal and Bihar, I want to also tell you. All of you must be familiar with Swami Vivekananda. You know what Swami Vivekananda, uh, what, what Swami Vivekananda said about the Bhagavad Gita? Does anyone know? He said it's a bouquet of flowers from the Upanishads. Gita is also, Bhagavad Gita is also called the Gita Upanishad. What does the word Upanishad mean? Does anybody know what Upanishad means? Huh? Sit by near. Huh? Sit by near. Mm, I didn't get you, Mataji. So Upanishad. Hit by near. Ah, uh, hit by near. What is it? Hit by hit near. Uh, I don't know. I'm still not. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm not able to get that. Upanishad means you know sitting under the tutelage of a guru and learning the spiritual. Or imbibing the spiritual knowledge under the guidance of a guru. That's the meaning of Upanishad. What's the meaning of Bhagavad Gita? <clears throat> What's the meaning of Bhagavad Gita? Song of Krishna or Song Excellent. of God. Song of God. Excellent. Okay. Song of God. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So, what did Mahatma Gandhi say? Mahatma Gandhi said, Can someone read this slide for me, please? Anyone? Those who meditate. Yeah, read, read, read. Those who meditate on the Gita will drive the prince to desire fresh When I read the Bhagavad Gita and reflect about how God created the universe, everything else is so superfluous. Exactly. So what did uh, Mahatma Gandhi say? He said every time he reads the Gita, he gets a fresh joy and new meaning from it. And it's so absolutely true. Trust me, I have read the book many times and every time I read it, I feel I'm reading it anew. And every time I read it, there's a different context that I get from it. And what did um, uh, Albert Einstein say? Einstein, you know, I, all of you know about Albert Einstein, right? Look at what he's saying. He said, after reading the Gita, the whole universe seems so meaningless to me. It's so superfluous, he says. And you will understand why he said that in chapter 4. Okay? When we go to, go to Bhagavad Gita chapter 4, I'm going to refer back to Einstein and ask you what he said. So remember this, okay? Take, keep, a, keep a notebook and keep jotting down some points and also keep jotting down some of the things that are really, really, you know, attracting you. Yeah? Because this is what will help us in our discussions. Okay? So what is so special about Iskon's Bhagavad Gita? Can someone read this for me, please? Hare Krishna. Ma'am, may I? Yes, please go ahead. Why is Khan Bhagavad Gita as it is? Fawn gets damaged if you can change it with a broken cable. It cannot be used for the proper data transfer edited. This is due to the lack of context between the source and the receiver. Similarly, the message of the Krishna must came by an unbroken chain of discipline successions. Yes. The Bhagavad Gita, you know, has to be, people have, you know, you yeah. have the various types of Bhagavad Gita, various copies of Bhagavad Gita is available in the marketplace. Okay. And very many people have made a living out of it by using it for their own advantage. Now, if you don't give Krishna's message, the, gave, the way Krishna gives it to us, it makes no sense. We, I cannot interpret it the way I want it. I have to give you the meaning or I have to tell you what Krishna said. And that's what is contained in the Bhagavad Gita as it is by Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada has been so, so, you know, vociferous, you know, and quite vocal about the fact that people have tried to twist, you know, what Krishna has, what Krishna addressed or what Krishna, you know, shared with Arjuna. So therefore, we must read and understand these scriptures only from the right source 
and as well as ensure that we are not getting getting wrong interpretation and thereby you know it completely it completely convolutes or completely you know uh, gives us a very very different um, you know aspect of uh, of learning and knowledge which is not the intent uh, of these scriptures at all okay the scriptures through the scriptures it makes us a better person now what are the important things of the bhagavad gita hmm? before i get there it is actually the creme la creme you know it is the cream when you when you boil milk this cream on top it is the cream okay that is the bhagavad gita it is a practical guide there is nothing that is that is there you know that can give you as much of a guy as much of guidance and learning and knowledge as much as the bhagavad gita gives you right and it helps you what does this learning help you the learning helps you to may live your life and as well as your living more meaningful okay it teaches you simple living aspects and it also encourages you to lead a simple life but with high level of intellect which will help you to reach high levels of thinking so bhagavad gita is only about the extraordinary it is not about the ordinary at all it only asks you to go and reach your aspirations and go after your goal that is the purpose of the bhagavad gita and if you have come with that aim and that purpose you are at the right place okay so now the gita is a very vast book it has 700 verses hmm? so a systematic study of the gita is not possible in 18 days so we will be doing an overview which will give you an idea as to what the gita has and it will help you or it will give you a platform hmm? for you to kind of you know uh, 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 move on to a deeper study of the gita okay and we offer you those uh, those uh, avenues as well i will explain to you as we move forward okay now so what how does this bhagavad gita come about <clears throat> can someone read this hari krishna yeah read this yes ma'am may i yes yeah. please go ahead arjuna arjuna's bewilderment and appearance of illusion must be understood to be krishna's arrangement if not for arjuna's confusion and bewilderment there would have been no necessity for krishna to speak the bhagavad gita to rescue him although arjuna is the apparent first listener of the bhagavad gita it is for the benefit of everyone thank you ma'am exactly hare krishna so you know we we should be thankful to arjuna we should be thankful that there was a devotee there was a disciple there was a friend such as arjuna with krishna and we also should be deeply thankful to krishna who came you know the who the mahavishnu who came with his full energy to this land 5100 years ago this was in the dwapara yuga which is when the mahabharata took place okay and if it had not been for what arjuna is going to experience which is what you will see in the next verse uh, next verse onwards uh, you know this bhagavad gita wouldn't have come around right so we should be extremely thankful to arjuna for having given us this rich um, uh, you know uh, this rich guide called the bhagavad gita okay so can somebody read this hari krishna <clears throat> ma'am yeah go ahead come Krishna drove the chariot in midst of both armies Arjuna was in difficulty in having to fight the battle of Kurukshetra he surrendered up to Shri Krishna and consequent consequently this Bhagavad Gita was spoken Hari Krishna Hari Krishna so you know the Bhagavad Gita is set you know in the in the Bhishma Pravaha Hmm, of uh, of of the mahabharata the mahabharata also has 18 uh, 18 uh, 18 parvas okay bhagavad gita has 18 chapters 700 verses so this is set somewhere in the middle of the mahabharata uh, the the which is the great uh, purana or the or the or the itihasa okay and um, it is it is really like a like a pendant in a necklace okay and uh, this happened because you know the war was the war was the setting was the was the was the battlefield both the armies the kaurava armies and the pandava armies had had assembled 
in the in the in the, the battlefield and just before just as when the war was about to begin arjuna suddenly tells um, uh, krishna he said hey krishna can you take me to the to the to the to the center of the battlefield or take me closer to 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 the uh, to the to the enemies who are the kauravas i want to have a close look at who they are and what they are and why have they come here to fight with us hmm? so the lord takes the chariot right in front of the army that is assembled uh, before the pandavas and he draws the chariot it is said right between uh, you know uh, right opposite drona and dronacharya and bhishma okay so that's how it looks there were 18 but the, the total number of battalions that were assembled there were 18 in number everything is 18 18 in number 11 battalions battalions were huge battalions and we were not talking about small numbers we're talking about huge huge number this was a war of war it was called the mahabharata it was a war of war it was a war where everybody in the world took place everybody in the world uh, participated so the the the, the kauravas had 11 battalions and the pandavas had seven battalions okay there were a smaller army facing a larger army okay and this was a war of the right versus the wrong it was a war, it's a fratricidal war it was a war between cousins right of belonging to the same family all for what all for wealth and reputation and kingdom right okay so thank you so much welcome again we will begin our journey now what is this first chapter okay so before that we'll have to really pay our pay our obeisances to um, to lord krishna uh, and also this is a beautiful description that comes in the gita mahatmya sarva upanishado gavo dugda gopalanandanah parto vatsa sudhir bhokta dugdam gita amritam mahat what does it mean all the upanishads are like a cow hmm? and the milker of the cow is lord krishna Mm, he is a cow herd the son of nanda mm, arjuna is the calf the beautiful nectar of the gita is the milk and the fortunate devotees of the fine theistic intellect are the drinkers and enjoyers of the milk so now you know why we regard the cow so highly in our culture okay we respect the cow right so we regard the cow as someone who provides us the nectar of life hmm? all of us have you know we have grown up on the milk that the cow has given us so that is the nectar nectar which gives you the power to kind of grow up so therefore the the milk that we get from the nectar that comes from the bhagavad gita the song of the lord is nectarian that gives you the the life to lead your living well okay so this chapter is called the arjuna vishada yoga this is chapter 1 uh, yoga means association association with what association with god consciousness association with god association with the supreme brahman so this chapter is all about arjuna's lamentation arjuna's di- dilemma okay arjuna is completely confused you know he has come to the war field he has come all prepared he is confused whether he should fight or not so there are different reactions to the you know there's a battlefield there are three people you know we see uh, can you tell me who do you see in the in the top most corner who's that <clears throat> on the top most corner hari krishna dhritarashtra excellent and who is in the center arjuna very good and in the in the, in the, in the bottom corner san suryodhan excellent so we have actually in fact four characters that uh, will will come about uh, as we read the first character and the only verse where he speaks is dhritarashtra the meaning of dhritarashtra means dhrita means steady dhritam hmm? rashtra means kingdom he was someone who was highly 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 you know very 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 steady on his on his on his desire for the kingdom okay that's what his name means and he was a blind king he was blind he was born blind but being blind is not the problem he was blind spiritually and he was blind internally okay and all, all and there and he was he was literally someone who could have stopped this war but he didn't because of his excessive desire for his children excessive desire for the kingdom excessive desire to 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 have himself above the rest 
And then we have Arjuna. He is one of the five brothers of the Pandavas, the son of Kunti, okay? And, and a great devotee and friend of, uh, of Lord Krishna. Then we have Duryodhana, who is the eldest son of, uh, of Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra had 101 children, 100 boys and one girl. And, uh, uh, you know, he was absolutely a wavered boy right from his childhood because his father was, was physically blind, but the, his mother also blindfolded herself. And therefore, maybe that one, one of the reasons he was completely, you know, let loose. And he just was not someone who had the right qualities that a prince of a large, uh, 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 you know, Rashtra should have. Okay. We move to the next slide. Can somebody read? Okay. Can, okay. I'll read this. So Dhritarashtra opens the Bhagavad Gita. We open it up with his speech or with his, uh, with his uh, narration. What does he say? Dhritarashtra uvacha dharma kshetre kuru kshetre samaveta yutsavaha mamakaha pandavas jaiva kimma kurvata sanjaya. That's what he asks. So the fourth character is Sanjaya. Now who is Sanjaya? Sanjaya is a disciple of Vyasa. And because of his extreme devotion, and who is Vyasa? Vyasa is, a, is, a, is, a, is an incarnation of Mahavishnu, okay, himself. And Vyasa, uh, Vyasa's disciple was Sanjaya. And uh, Sanjaya was such a highly devoted uh, person. And not only devotion, he was also a well-read uh, uh, individual. And because of the various siddhis and yuktis that he had attained, he had the ability to kind of, you know, see something that is happening very, very far away, mm -hmm. where even though he wouldn't be present there. So Dhritarashtra gets to see what is happening on the battlefield. And we also get to hear the conversation between Krishna and Arjuna through Sanjaya, through his divine eyes of Sanjaya. Okay. Uh, Dhritarashtra asks, what does Dhritarashtra ask? He says, Dharmakshetre Kurukshetre. He's calling Kurukshetra the Dharmakshetra. Does anyone know why Kurukshetra is being called the Dharmakshetra? Because the battle was fought over there of good and bad. Okay, that's one reason. Great, excellent. Any other reason? There is a battle between Dharma and other. Adharma and Dharma, and that's one reason. What else? The Lord himself was present there. We have the Bhagavan who is there themselves. So therefore that automatically makes Kurukshetra the Dharmakshetra. Wherever the Lord is there, victory is bound to be absolutely something that will automatically come about. Okay. So Dhritarashtra is fully aware. See, please understand. Uh, Dhritarashtra is older to Krishna and Krishna when he was born, you know, everyone heard about the various leelas of his. Everyone heard about the glories. So Dhritarashtra was fully aware of who Krishna is and what are the powers of Krishna. He also knows that the Pandavas time and again, in despite his uh, the Kauravas having inflicted a lot of misery upon the Pandavas, they continuously came out unscathed from each of the problems that they faced. And all of that was because of the presence of Krishna by their side. So Kuruksh, the, the, the Dhritarashtra was someone who fully understood this and knew this very well. Now, here you see this picture. The, you know, there's a milk pot and milk is boiling. So in our culture, the milk boiling and overflowing of milk is a good sign. Correct? It's an auspicious sign. Whenever we go, we start anything do new, at least in South of India, we do milk boiling and the milk overflows. And then milk overflows, it's supposed to be something which is very pious. Now, what is this man doing, Dhritarashtra? He is saying, Mamakaha Pandavas Chaiva. He's asking, Mamakaha means what are my sons and the sons of Pandu doing? He is distinguishing his own nephews the sons of his brothers and his own or, and, and, and his own children. He's clearly creating a wedge. He's clearly bringing in a wall between them, just like the way we make paneer. We make cottage cheese, right? How do we make cottage cheese? How do we make paneer? Hare Krishna. How is paneer made? Milk. Huh? Milk from milk. 
milk but how does uh, how does uh, you know how do you by differentiating the- water so you pour either you know some medium which will remove the fat from the water right so our dhritarashtra is doing exactly that he is curd he is just doing it exactly like the way the paneer or the cottage cheese comes out of the milk so he he is kind of he is calling the paneer he is keeping the paneer for himself and the water for the pandavas which is just just to give you an example see dhritarashtra could have done a wonderful thing he could have really instead of making paneer he could have made lovely rasgullas and distributed to, to both his both his nephews and as well as his own ch- own sons and created a truce and given the pandavas the five villages that they asked they were also kshatriyas they also belonged to the same kingdom all that he could have done was give them those five villages and told his son hey son just shut up give my nephews what they what they need to do so that they can lead their life this whole mahabharata wouldn't have happened at all but because of one man's greed because of one man's desire look at how what happened to the entire world because this was not a war between one family or known it was a mahabharata it was a war of wars okay so what could have been really a dharma he just broke it up like you know like cottage cheese and whey and he's asking now what are they doing he knows fully well what they are doing what they have gone for and very very you know cheekily he is asking what are they doing can somebody read 1.3 hari krishna 1.3 Can I read? Yes, yes. Oh, my teacher! Because the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Draupadi. Draupada. So, you know, when just the 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 war the war is just going to begin, and before that, uh, Duryodhana runs to his teacher, and who is his teacher? Who is the teacher of the Kauravas mm-hmm. and the Pandavas? dronacharya dronacharya so runs to dronacharya and he says and look at the way he is looking at him he has no respect he is saying look look at the way you know your your student who is a drupada the son of drupada who is the son of drupada drishtadyuman drishtadyuman so drupada had a son drishtadyuman and drishtadyuman was you know predominantly born he was born out of a bo out, out of out of severe penance that drupada underwent uh he had uh, you know he had uh, uh, three children so one is draupadi drishtadyum and he also had a son called shikhandi okay and uh, you know drupada drupada and uh, you know dronacharya were studying together in the gurukula and they were great friends and at that time drupada had promised drona that he knew that drona is a simple brahmana so drupada said when i become the king drona i will give you half my kingdom to you okay and uh, afterwards they grew up and they parted ways and you know drupada became the king of his kingdom and dronacharya came back and he also got into grihastha he got married he got a, he got a son and one day the son was crying for uh, food there was no food in the house so then uh, drupada's wife tells him can you please you know you have a rich uh, 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 your friend is a very big king why don't you go to drupada and ask him for some help i'm sure your your, your friend will help you so then dronacharya goes to the uh, goes to the you know palace of uh, drupada and uh, as he was entering drupada insults him he said who are you so drupada says i am your friend remember we both of us studied together he said of course not i don't remember you a, a, a silly stupid brahmana a poor brahmana can't be my friend he said go 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 so drupada told the drona told him look what you are doing is wrong you promised me that you will give me half the kingdom and now you are insulting me and we uh-huh. studied together you do you, you fail to recognize uh you uh-huh. know our days in the gurukula drupada says i don't care just go and drona comes back he feels extremely depressed and he gets a job bishma gives him the job to teach um, you know the martial arts to the kauravas and the pandava princes and uh, after having gone through their studies uh, you know in those systems the in, the, in those days uh, the teachers would ask for guru dakshina so Dro, the uh, dronacharya asks the kauravas and the pandavas he says i want you all to give me guru dakshina so they say um, acharya what do you want he says i want you to defeat drupada and i want to become i want that kingdom of his so first you know duryodhana and the kauravas say no no we will go so the dronacharya says please go and uh, they go fight with drupada 
and they get completely routed. Draupada completely defeats, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Kauravas. They come back. They come back with a loss. So Dronacharya gets very upset. So then Arjuna comes forward. Arjuna says, I will go for the battle alone. And all the other four brothers also line up behind. And they all go and fight with uh, Drupada. And Dr uh, Arjuna is such a great warrior. He's a big Kshatriya. Hmm? And all the Pandavas, you know, they're really, really very, very endowed with great knowledge, not only um, of the scriptures, but also they were great Kshatriyas. Okay. So Arjuna brings him, brings Drupada completely tied. Hmm? He ties him up and he drags him and brings him to, Dra uh, to Dronacharya. Dronacharya says, now you part with 50% of your kingdom to me. And Dronacharya takes 50% of his kingdom. And Drupada gets very angry. The Dr Dronacharya insults him further. He says, okay, I let go of you. Go handle the other 50% of the kingdom. Just go, I'll leave you. So that infuriates Drupada. And Drupada gets, you know, into, uh, 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 you know, he, 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 he has, a, uh, he prays to all the, all, the, all the gods and he gets the boon and he, three children are born to him. Okay, and that's how Drushtadyumna, a son of Drupada, uh, you know, is the one who's on the other side and he is the one who has arranged the army of the Pandavas. So he says, look at the way Drushtadyumna, your student. Now your student means what? Drupada sent Drushtadyumna to Dronacharya because Dronacharya was one of the best teachers of those days from where martial arts could be uh, learned. So, but... Dronacharya being a Brahmin, you know, Brahmin, Brahmanas those days were really, really kind-hearted people, very nice people. They were learned people, ever ready to help people. And he could not turn away the request of someone who came to him to learn. And therefore, Drishtu Dhyumna was a student of Dronacharya. But now, Dronacharya is on the Kaurava side, Drishtu Dhyumna is on the Pandava side. So, he, Duryodhana points out to him, look, don't get carried away because it's your student. You are the one, you made a mistake. You kind of took him under your tutelage. And now that same student is standing before you to fight with us. So you got the idea? The mind of Duryodhana? Very, very shrewd man. Okay. And look at the way he's looking at his, at his teacher. He's not even bothered. He doesn't even think that this is a teacher who made me out to be what I am today. Right? So then what happened? After this, Dronacharya and Bhishma understood the, the, you know, the, the, the dilemma or rather the anxiety or the bewilderment that was going on in the heart of Duryodhana. And they kind of give him some kind of an affirmation. They tell him, don't worry, we are on your side. We are going to fight for you only. And they all blow their conscious. Now, they are one after the other, the Kaurava army, each one. So those days, when before starting a fight, they wouldn't just go and fight. They would give a signal. We are going to start the fight. This is to happen in the morning. Okay. And that is at the time of, um, uh, you know, once the sun rises at the time of dawn. And once the day gets over, dust, the war will stop. That was a principle. It was a principled war. And even Kurukshetra was far, far away from where everybody was living. It's not like today, you know, people don't care. They go bird, drop bombs anywhere and everywhere. Those days were not, those days was principled days. So that's why the Lord had to take an incarnation to make sure that, you know, the principles of Dharma was retained. Okay. So now 1.19, Sagosho Dhartrashtrana, Mridhyani Vayadriya, Nabascha Prithivim Chaiva, Tumulo Bhaya, Abhayanu Dhaya. Can someone read this translation, Hare Krishna? The blowing of these yes. different conscious became uproarious and thus vibrating both in the sky and on the earth, it settled the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. Yeah, so what happened? Once they blew their conscious, the conch shells were blown by the Pandava's side. So the first person to blow the conch shell was the Panchajanya of Sri Krishna. See, everyone's conch shells had a name. So Krishna's conch shell was called the Panchajanya. And then uh, Durya, uh, Arjuna also blew his conch shell. Uh, I think it was called Poundram. So each one blew their conch shell. When they blew the conch shell, it kind of, you know, the... The earth and the sky just shattered, it seems. You know, there was completely, there was a there was an absolute divine transcendence that just pervaded the entire environment. So one needs to understand, however powerful an enemy be, if if someone is really nasty, greedy, 
untidy, unclean in their heart. However powerful they may be, whatever wealth they may possess, hmm, they will never feel complete. They will never feel absolutely, you know, in, in control. It will shatter them whenever they see anything good happening around them. So always remember, anyone who seems very powerful, very rich, very well off, and who is actually not good, who is who is greedy, who is who cheats people, hmm, who is who has a lot of bad vices, hmm, will never ever be happy in despite all the kind of wealth they have. Here was Kaurava army, which was really large, eighteen battalions. They had the best of best of people. They had Bhishma, they had Drona, they had Kripacharya, all on this side. But still, I don't think it really helped them. Okay, the moment these conch shells were blown, their hearts shattered. Okay. <clears throat> so now there are five, there are several reasons why you know the Pandavas were set to win. Mm -hmm. So there's a beautiful thing that says. Jayeshtu Panduputra Nam Yesham Pakshe Janardana. Wherever there is Janardana, wherever there is the Lord, victory is bound to happen. So therefore, the Lord Krishna, hmm, Mahavishnu, the, Mah the Yogeshwara is with the Pandavas and victory was definite. So what are the various indicators of this victory? Kurukshetra becomes Dharmakshetra. Why? Because the Lord is present. And the divine conscience, the Lord, you know, which is conscious when he blows it, you know, there are several communities who blow the conch conscience. It really is to spread goodness and piety and also to kind of ensure that we are not, we are closing our ears to all kinds of bad noises, hmm? all kinds of bad vibes. Okay. So the conscience really gives you a great vibe of positivity. The Kapidvaja. Kapidvaja is the flag post. And in the flag post, can you tell me what can you see on the Kapitvaja on the flag post of uh, Arjuna's chariot? What do you see? Lord Hanuman. Hanuman. Lord Hanuman. Yes. Hanuman is an eternal servitor of the Lord. Hmm? Wherever there is Hanuman, there is wherever there is the Lord, Hanuman will always be there. And Hanuman, there's a lovely story. I think I'm crossing my time. I will tell you the story tomorrow of why Hanuman is there on Arjuna's chariot. Uh, the next one is the Gandiva. Gandiva is the astra that uh, you know uh, uh, that Arjuna got uh, from Varuna, and this was this this astra was actually this Gandiva bow was, was came from the was created by Lord Brahma, and passes on from different people. And it, uh, Varuna, uh, you know, the demigod Varuna gave it to Arjuna, and the and the and the significance of this Gandiva bow is that the quiver that it has keeps getting refilled automatically. You don't have to go and refill your quiver. It automatically you know, refills it. So the, the, the person who is in control of it doesn't will never go run out of ammunition. And then he also has the divine chariot. The divine chariot that, that you're seeing there before you was given by Lord Agni. There's also a beautiful story of why Agni they gave this chariot to, to, uh, uh, to Arjuna. I will tell you the story tomorrow. Now, this chariot can move in any direction. It can move on earth and it can fly on in the sky as well. And Tyakta Jivita, you know, everyone is bound to die on this. Anyone who's supporting Dharma, I mean, Adharma is, is bound to be killed in, on, this, on, this, on this battlefield. Okay. So, victory was, was a foregone conclusion for the Pandavas. And Moksha the Ekadeshi. That's why Ekadeshi is very, very celebrated for all of us. The Bahabharata war started on the Ekadeshi day. Bhagya Lakshmi, wherever there is Krishna, wherever there is Mahavishnu, Bhagya Lakshmi or Sri or Aishwaryam will always accompany him. So there were all these indicators which gave a lot of power to the Pandavas and also it sank the heart of Dhritarashtra because all this, Dhritarashtra knew heart of heart that he was on the wrong and he also knew all the positivities that that, that was that was going to help the Pandavas to win the war. And Rishi Kesha, the Lord is called the Rishi Kesha because he is the controller of all the senses. He is the one who is present in all the living entities and it is through bhakti and divine, you know, divine attempt is how we can enable Rishi Kesha to control us so that we stay on the path of a path of uh, righteousness. We stay on the path of dharma. So Rishi Kesha, the Lord's presence, is one another indicator. Lord's potencies, Lord's capacities are other indicators of the Pandavas' victory. Okay. Okay. 
Now, Arjuna is in tears. Now, what are the reasons? He doesn't want to fight. He says, I don't want to fight. He says, these are all my own people. How can I, oh, Arjuna, oh, oh Krishna, how can I fight my own uh, grandfathers, my teachers, various, my, all my brothers, their children? He said, I can't fight them. He said, he was overwhelmed with compassion. And compassion is a normal feature or a normal quality of a devotee. Arjuna was the great devotee of the Lord. So compassion came automatically. He didn't have to really struggle hard for the compassion. He had this compassion. Nobody else had this compassion. Everyone, you know, there was 18 battalions, huge armies standing opposite each other. No one felt this compassion. It was only Arjuna who had this compassion. And then he said, what joy am I going to get by fighting, by killing all of them? They'll all be dead. And if they're all dead, how am I going to enjoy? How am I, what, of what use of, of what use is this kingdom to me if everyone is gone? If my entire family and all my cousins are going to be wiped off, what am I going to do with this kingdom? He says, I get no joy. Then he said, it's a sin. Don't you think fighting and killing and bloodshed is a sin? He said, I don't want to commit this sin. Then he says, family traditions. Now, if, if all of them are going to die, everyone, see all the brothers, all the men are going to die. So the elderly, the women, and the children. He said, Everyone is going to become orphaned. Who will take care of them? The women will be will be will be misused by, by society. They will be they will be there'll be an increase in population. They will children will be will be there'll be atrocities committed on children. Elderly parents will not have anybody to look after them. There'll be complete rampage that will happen, and it will be absolutely something that will be irrecoverable. He said, I don't want to get into something like that. Hey Krishna, hey Rishi Kesha, hey Govinda, hey Madhava. Please, I cannot fight this battle, is what he says. And in chapter 2, he'll also say, finally in 2.6, I really don't know, Krishna, whether this war should be fought or not. I am completely in a, in a, in a state of uh, dilemma. I cannot fight, is what he says. Okay. So five reasons is what he quotes. He quotes compassion. He quotes that I have no enjoyment. He says it's a sin. He says, family traditions will be broken. And he also says, I, oh my God, I cannot fight this. Okay. Now, what all can you relate to? See, all of us come across these kind of dilemma in our day-to-day -day life. Can any one of you tell me any of these dilemmas that you have felt in your life? Have you come across this kind of problems? Yes. Yes. So when such problems, you were faced with such problems, what, what kind of reactions did you have within yourself? How did you behave? How did it affect your behavior? What kind of changes happened in you? What was the quality? Yeah. Our way of thinking got changed and we have to be Neutral about the things. Okay, your way of thinking. Things. What happened when you face a situation of you know completely feeling, completely feeling at a loss, completely feeling lost, completely anxiety. Anxiety. Excellent. What happened when you faced anxiety? Depression. What, what were the what were the bodily reactions that you underwent? I got angry, harm the body features. Okay, you got angry. Uh, what else? Somebody said depression. Okay, what else? Delusion. Delusion. What else? Couldn't take a blank. 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 You went blank. Okay, what else? Loss of intelligence. Loss of intelligence. Excellent. So what happens uh, is overthinking. Overthinking, yes. We overthink. When we overthink, we are not thinking from the intellect. Loss of intelligence is somebody's. We don't think. What happens is we are we, we work more at the bodily level, more at the sense organs level, and more at the heart, at the emotion. So whenever you're working from an emotional level, your intellect is completely cut off. So when your intellect is cut off, your judgment, your ability to make the clear judgment, discrimination distinction and as well as making those clear you know demarcation doesn't happen 
And therefore, what it leads to, it leads to a lot of bodily reactions, like you feel extremely hot, you have hot flushes, you know, you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to be yourself. You either will be overdressed to, you know, mask yourself, or you will underdress yourself. You And when I say underdress, you will not have that, you know, that, that energy to really, you know, uh, 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 really be prim and proper. Your cleanliness will take uh, will go for a shot. Uh, your 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 you know your daily routine will go for a shot. And whatever decisions you make, your decisions are going to be completely convoluted. Are con going to be completely the opposite of what you would have otherwise liked it to be, or what you would otherwise would have done when you were in your normal state. And that's exactly what was happening to Arjun. Arjuna had got completely deluded. Somebody said deluded. He was completely deluded. When does delusion happen? Delusion happens when your intellect is cut, over, cut off from your mind. Your intellect completely goes into a slumber. When you're going to be acting, hmm, I act from the body, it is physical. When I act from the mind, it is emotional. All my judgments are going to abound to be wrong because I act from an emotional point of view. At, what does emotion do? Emotion only tells you, I like it, I don't like it. Now, Arjuna is just doing that. He said, I dislike war. I don't want to fight with my people because I like them. So that's what Arjuna is doing. I like my people, therefore I dislike to fight. So he is working at an emotional level. Did you get it? Is everyone with me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so there are five things that we saw in this chapter. One is Dhritarashtra's inquiry. He says, Kimma Kurvata, what is happening? As if he doesn't know. Then we saw Duryodhana's fear. Why was Duryodhana's fear? Because Duryodhana, you need to understand, he knew that Drona and Bhishma are with him. Why are they with him? Can anybody tell me why does he think Drona and Bhishma are with him? Because whenever he did any, committed any kind of atrocity on the Pandavas, Bhima and Drona always supported him. And they are still supporting Dhritarashtra. That way they are, that's why they are on the side of Kauravas. For example, when the Draupadi was, you know, was being uh, disrobed in the, 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 you know, uh, uh, when she was being disrobed, no, none of these people. In the were, beg your pardon? In the Sabhas. Yeah, nobody came to support her. Nobody stopped, stopped him from doing that. So they knew he, he, Duryodhana's fear, fear was there despite that. He knew that they will not part, but he wanted to ensure that suddenly they don't go compassionate towards the Pandavas because Bhishma always had a soft corner for the Pandavas. And Arjuna was his favorite grandson. And the blowing of the conscious. The conch blowed, blowed, that, that was blown by Lord Krishna was transcendental because he is Lord Mahatma. He is Paramatma. Right? And Arjuna's observation. What is Arjuna's observation? He doesn't want to fight. Why does he not want to fight? Because of the five reasons that he quoted. And because of that, what happened? His, his Gandiva was slipping from his hand. And it gave a lot of joy to Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was just hoping these people just, you know, surrender to the Kauravas. And uh, they just move away from the sea. Because Dhritarashtra knew heart of heart. It was Dharmakshetra. And if the war were to take place, his sons will be killed. All the hundred sons will be killed. He was absolutely sure of it. And therefore, heart of hearts, he was hoping that the war will not happen. Right? And then we also saw the various reasons that Arjuna gave. The various reasons Arjuna gave was compassion. He said, I can't fight because I can't fight my own people. He said, it's, I, I'll get no enjoyment. after Even if I get a kingdom after killing all these people, I'm not going to have any joy. He said, it's a sin. I can't fight with my own people and commit sin. And then the fourth, the fifth point, he said, you know, by, by doing this, I'm going to completely break families away. And final point, the fifth point, which we will see as chapter two, is indecisiveness of Arjuna. So thus ends chapter one. Hare Krishna. Does anyone have Hare any Krishna. Questions? Hare Krishna. Any questions? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anybody, any questions? A uh, lot of things on chat. Anyone has any questions? Don't feel shy. Just ask. It's okay. I'm also a student like you. I will tell you if I have an answer. If I don't have an answer, I'll tell you I don't know. If I get, get you the answer, I'll get you the answer. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. When will get the recording every day? 
after two three hours or the next day. Ah uh, no, recording is already happening right now. It's there on YouTube. I'll send you the link right now. Just give me a minute. Yes. Any any other question? Mata, you should you should the three O N. Nutrition. Okay. Okay. This is the link of the YouTube. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Any questions, please, Hari Krishna? Mata ji, you showed the three pictures. What about the egg? Which so, egg? The, you showed the three pictures, na? Milk boiling. Uh, that is not egg, Mata ji. That is rasgulla. <laughs> uh, so, so, what is that situation? Rasgulla. Ras. He could have made a. See, uh, he said, "What are they doing in the in the in the in the battlefield?" Yeah. what will people do when there are two armies standing face to face what will they do they will fight they have not gone there to make rasgullas right <laughs> yeah ha ha i see just to drive a point you know dhritarashtra is being so silly he is such a he is a king hmm? he is a king of a large rashtra hmm? and he wants uh, the fight to take place and he is asking okay both these armies have uh, you know have gone uh, you know to kurukshetra uh, what are they doing What will they do? They want they to fight. They should fight, correct? Hmm. Okay, uh, Zanon Mata Ji, uh, if you're comfortable in Bengali, there is a cha Bengali. You can join the adult, uh, you know, group itself. No problem. It needn't have to be youth itself. So take the mark the option, uh, you know, which says adults, and you will automatically it will take you to the adult section of Bengali. Okay. N U T R I T I O N. Who is Adina Ji? Are you trying to say something, Hare Krishna? Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna. I have one question about uh, Gita, Mata Ji. Ah. What What actually we have to learn from Gita? Because I have first uh, session about Gita. Before I I can't know about the Bhagavad Gita, Ma'am, Mata Ji. Okay. So, just i want to know what can you learn from the gita what can you ask me what can you not learn from the gita <laughs> actually i don't gita, have idea the gita gives you answers to all the life questions it not only gives you answers to the life questions but it also tells you your relationship with yourself and with everything else in the world okay thank you it provides you loss of solace okay by knowing by having the gnana see the bhagavad gita is broken up into three three sections the first six chapters deal with karma yoga all about activities our duties our swadharma there yes. the middle section that is from chapter 7 to 12 deals with bhakti yoga okay uh, yes. bhakti is all about uh, you know bhakti with um, bhakti in terms of how is it that faith and devotion helps us to kind of reach perfection Hmm? Yeah. and yes. the last section deals with gnana hmm? gnana of what life is what is it that makes us who we are and what is it that can make us better than who we are yes okay so it helps us to kind of improve our relationships it helps us to bring in a lot of equipoise in us lot of balance in our thought process lot of lot of um, you know it also infuses energy Hmm? that which will help us to face every challenge that comes our way it also infuses and strengthens your intellect to such an extent that it help that it kind of you know helps you to reach that level of perfection hmm? and helps you to set up an aim and goal in your life and go after that goal as i told you bhakti marga or the devotion path of devotion is not about dullness is not about you know uh, leading a life of a recluse leading a life of isolation it is all about joy it's about pleasure it's about associating yourself with devotees with people who live a simple life but with high thinking no oh, thank you mata ji okay Yes. 
onion, you know, if you should read the Srimad Bhagavatam Mataji, that's why he said there's nothing that is not there in our scriptures. The Sridham Bhagavatam will, will, you know, there is a there is a little bit of a, you know, when the Samudra Manthan was taking place, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> there was the poison that came out from the snake that was being used for the, you know, for the Mandara Hill, you know, which was being churned by the Vasuki, right? Vasuki was being used to as a rope to churn the nectar. And there was poison that came out. Uh, the, 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 sorry, the, there was nectar that came out. And the nectar, I think this Rahu, hmm? very cheekily Rahu had a little bit of the nectar. The nectar was meant for only for the, uh, for the devis and the devatas. It was not meant for uh, the, the people with, uh, with uh, evil thinking. Rahu somehow sneaked in as a brahmana and he uh, took away a little bit of the nectar. When he took away that nectar, I think uh, Lord Shiva saw this or I don't know who saw this. Somebody saw this and they chopped off his head. A few drops of his blood fell on earth. And I believe garlic and onions are, were a result or a product of that blood. That is one story that goes. But apart from that, and you, you, you know what Prabhuji, Prabhu, uh, Prabhuji Namanishta Das tells us? He tells us, stop onion and garlic for a few days. And then you tell us what you feel after those few days. Stop having any kind of dishes or any kind of cuisine uh, that uh, you know that will not have onion and garlic. Stop it for a month, and then you come and come back and assess yourself and see what you felt after that. Or at least stop it for the next eighteen days that you're going to be part of us with this in this journey, and then come and report back on the eighteenth day how you feel without the onion and garlic. Are you with me? Thank you, ma'am. So, onion and garlic are predominantly something that will that will engage you in tamaguna, gunas that will kind of draw you towards your lower impulses. It will kind of increase your desires. So, if you have to be on the path of bhakti, on the path of devotion, not true devotion. We're talking about true devotion, and all of us are still at the baby stage. We're all at the, at, the, at, the, at the starting step or the first few steps of, of, the, of, our, of our journey. So go step by step and try and, you know, experience things for yourself. Don't have to stop anything overnight. Don't have to do any drastic change overnight. Try and convince yourself first. Talk to people who are convinced. Talk to people who have experienced it. And go, you know, uh, by your own do your own tests. Okay? Thank you, Mataji. And also you will know, God is not asking for all these big prashadams from us. It is because of our own love for God, we do all these prashadams. You will see that also in, 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 in one of the chapters in Bhagavad Gita. God only wants, Lord only wants our love. He only wants our affection. He only wants our, uh, our, our all our, you know, He just wants to shower his, you know, adulation on us. So all that he wants is our love and affection for him, nothing more. Hare Krishna. So Akshay ji like the Rasgulla, okay? <laughs> that is just to bring out the point, you know, that uh, to the answer, I mean, to the question raised by uh, Dhritarashtra. Because Dhritarashtra was very cunning. The question, that, that first verse is a very cunning, it has a lot of nuances to it. You know, it has shades of greed, shades of desire, shades of cheekiness. Hmm? Everything is there in that, in those four lines that he uttered. Okay. Uh, Sandeepanji, it's okay. You don't know Bengali. You want in language in Hindi? You can join Hindi, Sandeepanji. Hare Krishna. Uh, I'm comfortable in holy Hindi. Anybody else with any other question? Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, uh, at the end of the day, ah. or the 18 days, can we get certification or uh, of this session? Yeah, yeah, you will get a certificate. Uh, please answer all the quizzes. You have to uh, be regular at the quizzes. So today's chapter be completed. Go do the quiz. Okay. And at the end of it, you will get a certificate. Yeah, you do get a certificate. Hare Krishna Mataji. Where Hare we, Krishna. Where we get the quizzes? Uh, your, your quiz will be there on the website where you where you registered, no? I think you have to go back to the same link using the same ID 
and you will be able to access the quiz okay thank you hari krishna hari krishna ma'am you know teachers in hindi uh, somitra pandey ji i can teach in hindi but my hindi is not as good but there are sessions that are happening in hindi as well okay anyone else any other question mataji if ah. we repeatedly attend the 18 days course ah. uh, shall we get the certificate for every time uh, you don't need it mataji of course once you have attended it the first time you can go straight away to level 2 na no? no, just for <coughs> learning the quiz answer <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you will get certificates again and again. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank, thank but, you. But but once you finish level one, I think ideally you should go to level two. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Because it's nice, yeah. no? Because you want to advance. Yeah. In your in your uh, studies, right? Here we are yeah. only going through an overview. I give you a very quick overview, right? But yeah, level two, yeah. will be, level two will be very deep. We will go into every verse. Yeah. Level yeah. Two, level two is something that happens over eighteen weeks. and yeah. one chapter a week that means you you have one session and you do only one chapter detailed mataji i am attending the level 3 also now oh very good mataji excellent <laughs> excellent thank you so much hari krishna anyone else any other question okay if there are no questions we will stop the session and we will meet again tomorrow for chapter 2 and chapter 2 is a summary it's called the summary of the gita or contents of the gita summarized please join us tomorrow uh, and i'm sure all of you will really uh, enjoy it as much as you liked it today so hare krishna vancha kalpata rubyascha kripa sindhopya evacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namah hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram ram ram, ram, ram.